Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In this lesson, what we're going to be doing is, since a large majority of you are going to be writing maths paper one tomorrow, that we are going to basically be going through a prelim paper. Um, we're, so we're going to start go th going through some questions on a prelim paper and make sure that you basically can do all these questions. Um, so that's the plan for today. Tomorrow, obviously, since you're writing math paper two on Monday, we're going to go through paper two. Right, so let's see how far we can get in going through this paper. I basically just started because I don't know what sections you guys are struggling on in different, different because there's so many of you. Um, I've decided to start at the beginning and work my way through. Okay, so um, let's go through it. Let's start with the first question. Okay, a lot of you might be tempted to solve for x in each of the following, and a lot of you might be tempted to multiply this out and then factorize it again, which is silly because what they've really done, it's a, it's a typical error and there's nothing wrong with doing it. It's just time consuming because what they've done is they've already factorized it for you. And what you need to realize is that it can be broken up into 3x equals 0 or 2x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x equals 0 or 2x is equal to minus 1. Therefore, x is equal to negative a half. Okay, so those are our options. x equals 0 or x equals negative a half. If you had multiplied this out and then refactorize it, no big deal. But they really have done it for you already. Okay, let's look at question 1.1.2. Question 1.1.2 is asking us to solve for x. We've got 5x squared plus 3x. And what you've got to realize is that this is of the format of a trinomial. So we can go minus 1 equals 0. And then we have to look at the factors. And the factors of 5 are 5 and 1. And the factors of 1 are 1 and 1. So obviously, we're not going to get a 3. So we're going to have to use the formula, which is on the formula sheet. So it's not so scary. So we're going to use the formula. It's x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. OK? So obviously, 5 is a plus 3 is b and minus one is C. And a lot of students make the mistake of not realizing that that minus belongs to the one, and then they don't include that, which is a bit sad. So you need to remember that the negative actually belongs to the one and the whole of that is C. So if we substitute in, we've got minus three plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is three Oh, that's just a messy, sorry, just a second. <clears throat> it's better. That's not going to work at all. I didn't even know there was a white there. 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is 5, times a minus 1, okay, all over. 2 times by 5 which is minus three plus or minus the square root of, three squared is nine minus plus, minus times minus plus, four times five is 20, all over 10. Okay, so I'm gonna carry on over here because I've run out of space. So therefore X is equal to minus three plus or minus the square root of 29, all over 10. So we can, Pop that into our calculator. That's not going to work for me. There we go. And then there we go. So what do we have? We have got negative 3. And we're going to do the plus first. So it's plus the square root of 29 all over 10 equals, that really doesn't help, 0 0.24. So it's 0.24 or let's go back and let's go back to this and change that to a minus and go equal it still doesn't help me and that becomes minus 0.84 
or negative 0.84. There you go. And those are your two options for your answers. Nice there. Guys, always check the formula, I mean the information sheet to see if they tell you to run off to one decimal place or two decimal places and then do whatever they say. Okay, please make sure you do that. Right, I'm going to erase everything so we can attack question 1.1.3. So 1.1.3 is asking us to solve for x. So we've got 3 to the 2x. I'm going to rewrite it. 3 to the 2x plus 2 times 8. I mean, plus 8 times 3 to the x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this 3 to the 2x plus 2 up into 3 squared times 3 to the 2x plus 8 times 3 to the x minus 1 equals 0. 3 squared is 9, so it becomes 9 times 3 to the 2x plus 8 times 3 to the x minus 1 equals 0. Now, okay, you didn't have to write both these lines. You could have gone straight to this third line. That's fine. And what you need to realize is that they're being sneaky. This is actually a trinomial. Watch. If I let k equal 3 to the x, then do you agree that k squared would be 3 to the x all squared which would be 3 to the 2x, okay? So therefore, I could say 9k squared plus 8k minus 1 equals 0. And now all I have to do is factorize this. So let's factorize it. The factors of 9 are 9 and 1 and 3 and 3. The factors of 1 are amazingly 1 and 1. The signs here, this sign here tells you that they have to be different and the bigger one has to be a plus. So it's obviously got to be plus 9 and minus 1. So it becomes 9k minus 1, k plus 1. Therefore, 9k minus 1 equals 0 or k plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, k is equal to 1 over 9 or k equals negative 1. Now, grade 12s, I need to just say to you that there are a couple of lines I could have left out. I could have left this line out. I could have left this line out. And I could have gone straight to this. Um, what worries me about doing that is that sometimes people will forget to when they take it across that this becomes a positive or that that becomes a negative and silly mistakes are made and similarly yeah so I would say don't be shy to add these extra lines in the use it possibly 10 to 15 seconds of your time and it does make sure that you don't make silly mistakes but if you are confident and you're happy to go from here through to here that's cool with me too okay let's move on right so now we've got a simultaneous equation they're asking us to solve for x and y if x minus 2y minus 3 equals 0 and x squared minus 3xy plus y squared equals 11. Okay, so now obviously the best, well there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can do this by substitution, you can do this by elimination. I am going to do it by substitution because of the fact there's an x squared here and a y squared here and xy. So it's going to be easier to substitute than to try and eliminate one of these, okay? Secondly, we now need to decide what we're going to solve for here. So we have an option since this is the linear equation to either solve for x or the y. If we solve for the y, we end up with the fraction. Watch. x minus 2y minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, we've got minus 2y is equal to 3 minus x, therefore y is equal to 3 minus x divided by negative 2. And that's a fraction. And then what would happen is with every time we'd see a y, we'd have to substitute this in. And that's horrible. So we're not going to solve for that. So here's my tip. Always solve for the thing that has a coefficient of 1. In other words, it's just by itself. So if we do that, we end up with x is equal to 2y plus 3 and we're going to call this equation 1 and we're going to call this equation 2 and what we're going to do is we're going to sub equation 1 
into equation two. In other words, wherever we see an X, we're now going to write 2y plus 3. Okay, so let's do that. So x squared becomes 2y plus 3 squared minus 3y times by the x, this x here, which is 2y plus 3 plus y squared is equal to 11. And now we just have to solve for y. Okay, so let's multiply this out. If you're worried about doing this, you can do it slowly and then use FOIL. Okay, so it's first, so it becomes 4y squared. Outers is going to be plus 9. And then it's, what is it, inners? Okay, that's plus 6y and lasts plus 6y. So what does that become? It becomes 4y squared plus 12y plus 9. And then when you multiply this out, please don't forget this minus, okay? It is seriously important. So that becomes minus 6y squared minus 9y plus y squared equals 11. Okay, so now we're going to bring everything to the one side and then add up all the like terms, okay? So we've got 4y squared minus 6y squared is minus 2y squared plus y squared is minus 1y squared. So it's minus y squared, okay? We've got 12y minus 9y, which is obviously 3y. And then we've got 9 minus 11 is minus 2 equals 0. Okay, because when you bring this 11 to the other side, it becomes a negative, and then obviously it's 9 minus 11. Right, so nobody that I know ever likes to factor as a trinomial with a minus in the front. So we're going to multiply everything by minus to get rid of that. So it becomes y squared minus 3y plus 2 equals 0. And now we need to factorize that, and it's a y, and it's a y, and it's a 2, and a 1, and a minus, and a minus. Why? Because this positive tells you that both the signs are the same. They're obviously both negative. They, the factors have to multiply to form 2, so 2 times 1 is 2, and they add up to 3, so 2 plus 1 is 3. Therefore, y equals 2 or y equals 1. Awesome, but we haven't finished. They said solve for x and y. So now we need to substitute into either this equation or this equation or this equation. And I personally will substitute into this duty. Okay. Why? Because it's easier. I mean, it's a linear equation and it's already got x as a subject of the formula. So x is equal to 2 times by 2 plus 3, which is 4 plus 3, which equals 7, okay? Therefore, one of the coordinates is going to be 2, 7, or x is equal to 2 times 1 plus 3, which equals 5. So the other one is 1, 5. And grade 12s, you have to, have to, have to show the two numbers together. You can't just write y equals 2 or y equals 1 and x equals 5 or x equals 7. You need to relate the two together. Okay, you need to relate them because you're actually working out the coordinates where the straight line crosses the circle. Okay, you need to understand that that's exactly what you're doing. Right, let's move on. Right, now it says, given 2x squared plus 6x minus 8, solve for x. If 2x squared plus 6x minus 8 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so what we need to do is we obviously need to solve this using an inequality. Note that it's an inequality. So the most important thing about an inequality is that you need a number line. Okay, you need a number line. So we're going to factorize it. So we're going to go 2x squared plus 6x minus 8 
I'm going to divide everything by 2. So you're left with x squared plus 3x minus 4. And then we obviously need to factorize that some more. So it's x and x. The factors of 4 are obviously 4 and 1 and 2 and 2. But we need a 3 here. So this is going to be 4 and this is going to be 1. And it has to be positive. So it's plus 4 and negative 1. So therefore, my points on my number line are 1 minus 4 and 1. And if you look at this, you can see that this is a parabola. It's the equation of a parabola and it's a happy parabola. It's a positive because a, which is 2, the coefficient of x squared, is positive. Right, and what did they want? They wanted for the values for which this thing was greater than 0, greater than or equal to, which is going to be from here up and from there down. So therefore the solution would be for x is greater than or equal to 1 or x is smaller than or equal to negative 4. Okay. Now they say determine for which values of x, x plus 1 squared over x squared plus 3x minus 4 will be undefined. Okay. Now before I even carry on with this, I want to point out that this is 1.3.1 and this is 1.3.2. So this and this is all under the given, given this, okay? This is all under this question, okay? Both of these are under this question, so they're related. They're not just randomly asking this, okay? So if you look at this, we said given 2x squared plus 6x minus 8, determine for which values of x, x plus 1 squared over this will be undefined, okay? But do you realize that when we're solving for this, we actually factorize the 2x squared plus 6x minus 8 into x squared plus 3x minus 4? So this thing here, this denominator here, is the same as that. So I can write this as x plus 1 squared all over x... Sorry, it really irritates me that it does that. Um, x minus 1, x plus 4. Okay, that is the same thing as this. Okay, now, now we want to find out when this thing is undefined. And it's undefined when the denominator equals 0. So therefore, this will be undefined at x equals negative 4 or x equals 1. It doesn't matter what values this will be, okay? It doesn't matter whatsoever. This is undefined when the denominator equals 0, which will be either at x equals minus 4 or x equals 1, okay? So please, guys, when you look at these questions, and I'm serious about this, when you look at these questions, you need to realize that what we are doing is they are doing steps, okay? So this is related to this, which is related to this, okay? So there is a reason why they're doing it in this order. Okay, let us move on to the next question. Right, so now it says, three graphs with the formula y is equal to a squared plus bx plus c are shown. Okay, so you can see that this is a, they're all parabola, right? We're happy they're all parabola. This is a parabola which just touches this is a parabola which doesn't touch at all. And this is a parabola which is negative and it has two real roots, okay? This has got two equal real roots. This has got two non, well, it's got non-real roots. Non-real roots, also called imaginary roots. And this is a negative graph and it's got two real roots roots, unequal real roots. Okay, now it says, match the statements below to the graphs drawn. Write only the numbers one, two, or three next to each question on your answer sheet. Okay, so what they want to know is which of these graphs belong to this, okay? Now, B squared minus 4AC is talking about delta. Okay, remember delta? Delta 
is b squared minus 4ac. And where does that come from? That comes from the formula, which goes x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so b squared minus 4ac is under the square root sign, and that is delta. So what they are doing is asking us about delta here. So do you agree that here, delta is greater than naught? If delta is greater than naught, it means that we've got two equal, no, sorry, eraser, two real unequal roots. Because if delta is a big positive number, yeah, we're going to have minus b plus the square root of a big positive number over 2a, or minus b minus the square root of delta over 2a. So there are two options. So therefore, this is graph 3. b squared equals 4ac can be rewritten as b squared minus 4ac equals naught. And that, when this is naught, what do we have? If that's naught, what do we have? We've got minus b plus or minus 0 over 2a, which is minus, just minus b over 2a. So therefore, it's this dude here. The two equal real roots is when b squared minus 4a is equals naught. So that's answer for graph 1. So obviously, this is graph 2, but just in case, just in case I didn't do it like that, b squared minus 4a c is negative. That means that you're getting a square root of a negative number. Can you get a square root of a negative number? Only if it's imaginary number. So it's non-real, so therefore this has to be graph two. Now it says choose one of the elements A to D. Where's B A to D? Oh, that's been cut off. Does me see something? No. There is no A to D. Okay, so we can't do that. Okay, let's move on to the next question. It says, prove that for any geometric series where the first term is A, okay, this is theory. Guys, I'm not going to do this. I'm not wasting this lesson on theory. You guys need to go learn your sum for your GP and your sum for your AP, and you need to learn those proofs, okay? Please go learn them. Um, seriously, at least one of them is going to be in the exams. Okay, there are not many theorems that they can ask you or theory questions they can ask you in the first paper. So there's a very strong possibility it's either going to be um, proving the geometric series or the arithmetic series. Right, let's carry on. It says, given the geometric series, 7 plus 3.5 plus 1 and 3 quarter, determine the sum to infinity. Okay, so we are given the formula that sum to infinity is equal to a over 1 minus r. a is easy. a is 7. It's the first term. We have to work out r. But what is r? r can be term 2 divided by term 1 or term 3 divided by term 2. So this is term 1 and this is term 2 and this is term 3. So I'm just going to take term 2 and divide it by term 1. So that's three and a half divided by seven. So do you agree that you can just do that on your calculator if you wanted to? But this becomes seven over two divided by seven, um, which equals a half. So R is a half. Therefore, the sum to infinity is going to be 7 divided by 1 minus a half, which is 7 divided by a half, which is 14. So the sum to infinity of this is 14. Ah, just a second, eraser. Um, what color was it doing? Red. 14. Now it says, show the sum to n terms of the sequence can be written as 14 minus 14 over 2n. 2 to the n. Okay. So let's write out the formula for the sum to n. The sum to n is equal to, and get out your 
formula sheet and you have a look at the formula is equal to a r to the n minus 1 all over r minus 1. Okay, so a is the first term, which is 7. This is a half to the power of n minus 1 all over a half. Do we agree? That's what we're saying. We're saying that 7 to the half to the n minus 1 all divided by a half r. Okay. Sorry, that's negative a half. Negative a half. Right. So therefore, we have got 7 times by a half to the n minus 1 times by negative 2. Okay. Because when I take it up, you tip and times it. So it becomes minus 14. I'm multiplying this negative 2 with the 7, minus 14. Then it becomes a half to the n minus 1. Okay, so let's now multiply that out. It becomes negative 14, okay, times by a half to the n, minus or minus is plus, plus 14. I don't understand why n is getting to the bottom. Oh, of course, sorry. So then it becomes 14 minus 14 over 2 to the n. And the reason for that, I was being stupid. If you've got half to the power of n, that is the same as 1 to the n over 2 to the n. Do you agree? So if I then multiply that with 14, I end up with 14 times by 1 to the n over 2 to the n. But the 1 to the n is obviously just 1. So there you go. That's the answer. There we go. I've just proven it. Ta-da! Now it says, hence, calculate the smallest value of n for which the sum to infinity minus s of n is smaller than 120. Okay, so let's just erase all the ink. Okay, so even if you didn't get this answer out, do you agree you could still do this question? Okay, admittedly, if you didn't get the sum to infinity, you're a little bit messed up, but otherwise. So the sum to infinity is 14 minus the sum to n is 14 minus 14 over 2 to the n is smaller than 1 over 20. And they want to know what the smallest value of n is. Okay, so if we get rid of the brackets, it becomes 14 minus 14 plus 14 over 2 to the n minus 1 over 20 is smaller than... Okay, well, why don't we just leave it as... Okay, let's just leave it as smaller than 120th. We'll see how we do. Is smaller than 120th. So those cancel, right? Now, do you agree we can multiply? We can't. Yes, we can. We can multiply by, do we want to? Sorry, we can multiply both sides by 2 to the n. So we get 14, no, 14 times 20 has to be smaller than 2 to the n. I'm just cross multiplying, okay? And because n is an exponent, you can multiply across in inequality because it'll never be a negative, okay? 2 to the negative is a fraction and 2 to the positive is bigger, so it's not going to work. So 14 times 20 is a what, okay? 14 times 20, 14 times 20 is 280. So 280 is smaller than 2 to the n. So they're saying, what is the smallest value for which this will be smaller than that? Okay. So we can either log this or you can just try a couple of things. So do you agree that 2 to the power of 5 is 32, 2 to the power of 6 is 64, 2 to the power of 7 is 128, 2 to the power of 8 is 256. So therefore, the smallest value of n for which this will be smaller is n will have to be 8. 
the smallest value of n for which this will work is n equals 8. Okay, understand. Right, let's do the next question. Okay, so we're still working with sequence and series. And it says determine the sum of this for k equals negative 1 to 20, 3k plus 2. So what I tell my students is, even if you don't understand what's going on, always find the first three terms. Just find the first three terms, okay? Once you find the first three terms, you'll usually work out what's going on. So all we're going to do is substitute in k equals minus 1, k equals 0, k equals 1, into the first into this to get the first three terms. So the term 1 is going to be 3 times minus 1 plus 2, which is minus 3 plus 2. Minus 3 plus 2 is 5. Term 2 is 3 times minus 2. No, it's not. Um, term 2 is minus 1 plus 0. So that's going to be just 0. 0 plus 2, which is just 2. Term, how is that 5, Candace? Sorry. That's minus 3 plus 2 is going to be minus 1. Term 3 is 3 times by 1 plus 2, which is 5. Okay, so our first three terms, if you're substituting the first three values for minus 1, 0, and 1, 3 times minus 1 is minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1. 0 plus 2 is 2, and 3 plus 2 is 5. So our first three values are minus 1, 2, 5. So now what we need to do is decide if this is an arithmetic sequence or a geometric sequence or what. So do you agree that from here to here is 3, and that looks like a smiley face now, and from there to there is 3. So therefore, this is definitely an arithmetic series. The first term, a is negative 1, and your common difference is 3. So now we can substitute into our arithmetic series, okay? So we've got s of n is equal to n over 2 bracket 2a plus n minus 1d. Okay, and now you just need to realize how many terms you are working with, okay, because that's important. So if you want to, you could think about it this way, okay? If we were going from minus 1 to 5, how many terms would you have? You'd have minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So do you see we've got two extra terms more than you thought if we're going to minus to just to 5. So obviously we need to account for those two extra terms when we're going to 20. So n is actually 22. n is 22 because we've got to cover minus 1 and 0. Okay. So therefore the sum, okay, for the first 22 terms from k equals minus 1 to 20, is equal to 22 over 2 multiplied by 2. A is the first term, which is minus 1, plus D is 3, so 3 minus 1 is 2, multiply, oh sorry, I'm being an idiot, N is actually the number of terms, not D, so N is 22 minus 1 is 21 times by 3. So that's 11 multiplied by negative 2 plus 63, which is 11 times by 61, which is going to give you what? Let's work it out. Let's use our calculators. So we've got 11 times 61 equals 671. So that's 671. So the sum to um, the sum of this is coming to 671. So this is a very nice question. It's just a little bit trickier than the normal because of the fact that it comes from k equals minus 1. Right, 
now it says determine the value or values of x for which the series converge. Okay, for this series to converge, it has to be a GP because for a series to converge, the R must be smaller than one and bigger than negative one. So that is one of the things you have to know, right? And your R is going to be term two divided by term one. So if this is term one and this is term two, we can work out what the R is, right? So this is going to be X minus four cubed over x minus 4 squared. So do you agree that cancels with that? So therefore, we've got r is just x minus 4. Therefore, we can say negative 1 is smaller than x minus 4 is greater than 1. I mean, it's smaller than 1. So then all you do is you handle this separately. You first handle the left hand side and then you handle the right hand side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the side and we're going to add. We're going to go minus 1 plus 4 is smaller than x, which is smaller than, and then we're going to handle this side. So we take it across again. It becomes 1 plus 4. I just want to erase this thing here. I don't know what was going on there. So therefore, x has to be smaller than 5 and bigger than 3. Okay. Right. Now it says, oh, it's a nice one. A quadratic pattern has the following. Term 1 is 0. Term 2 we don't know. Term 3 is 0. And term 4 is negative 3. It says determine the value of the second difference of this pattern. Okay, so let's call this x. Okay, do you agree that this would be x minus 0? Okay, so this is my first difference. Okay, and this is going to be 0 minus x. And this is going to be minus 3 minus 0. So if I wrote this out, this would be x negative x and negative 3. Okay, right? So that's my first difference, first difference. My second difference, my second difference is going to be minus x minus x. That's one. And this one is going to be minus 3 minus x. Okay. Sorry, no. Minus minus x. So that becomes minus 2x, and this is minus 3 plus x. Minus 3 minus x becomes minus 3 plus x. And these two are equal because the second difference has to be equal for a quadratic pattern. So the trick here was to let the second term be equal to x, and then just work through it as you would normally do, right? Then you know that minus 2x is equal to minus 3 plus x. If we take that across, we get minus 2x minus x is equal to minus, I'm going to work it out, minus 3. Therefore, minus 3x is equal to minus 3. Therefore, x is equal to 1. Therefore, the second difference is minus 2. The second difference is minus 2 times by 1, which is minus 2. And then it says determine T5. Okay, so if we take that back up, X is 1, right? So now it's easy. So let's just erase all this. Okay. So do you agree that this is going up? Watch, I'll show you. This is going, this is 1, that's minus 1. This is minus 3. The difference between these two is minus 2. The difference between these two is minus 2. Therefore, the difference between these two is minus 2. Therefore, that has to be minus 5. So you're looking at minus 3, minus 5. So T5 has to be minus 8. So that has to be minus 8. 
Right, grade twelves. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, um, so I cannot carry on. Good luck for tomorrow. Please, please just take things nice and carefully. Don't work too late tonight. I'm serious. For math paper one or for maths, you need a fresh brain. That's what you need more than anything else. Okay, have a great exam tomorrow. Cheers.